Hey everyone, my name is Jeremy McPeak for Net Tuts, and I'm bringing you today's quick tip. And since it's me, it is going to be .NET related, so for all of you .NET haters out there, I would say I'm sorry, but I'm not, because it's a great platform. But that's not to say that there aren't valid criticisms to the .NET framework and C Sharp. One of those is that it is full of classes, and if you don't know the classes or know how to use those classes, then you're pretty much up a creek. You can't write an application. Well, that is true, but Microsoft is making it a little bit easier for developers to just write code and not have to worry about that. One of those features is quite old, actually. It's really not new, but we didn't really see it until it was used in the MVC framework. And that's the use of passing an anonymous object here containing uh, what's essentially is a key value pair. In this case, two key value pairs. We have a key of class with this value, and then we have a key of ID and this value. And what this does is this creates uh, HTML attributes for the input element that's generated from this method here. So wouldn't it be great if we could do something like this that's used in JavaScript a lot just to pass uh, an object with some properties to determine how a method behaves? Well we can do that but we do have to write some code to do that. Uh, we are going to use the type descriptor class within the system.component model namespace. And what I have here is just a, a basically a rewrite of the HTML helper with a paragraph method. It's going to create a P element, give the value that whatever is specified here, and then we have an object of our attributes. And this will essentially be a key value pair or collection of key value pairs but it's going to be an anonymous object. So we have this method here that's called get attributes to basically convert this object here into some HTML attributes. So let's look at how we can use this get attributes method to basically convert an object into some HTML attributes. I have that already written here. I am using link to XML to generate the uh, HTML elements and its attributes for me. So uh, I don't have to do that myself. These classes will do it for me. But the key here is this type descriptor class. It has a method called get properties and we feed it the object that we uh, sent that was the anonymous object with the key value pairs as its properties. And what this will do here is we are looping through every property within that object and every property is going to be represented by this attribute object here. So the first thing we need is we need to get the attributes name. So we use the name property uh, to get that information and then we need to get the attributes value. So we use the get value method. We pass it this attributes object and we assign it to the value variable. But this is HTML, so we do need this as a string. So whenever we create our attribute with this X attribute class, then uh, the first piece of information we give it is the name of this attribute that we want it to be, and then we feed it the value. And we, we are going to call this toString method to convert that to a string. We add it to our collection of attributes here, and then we return that collection to the caller. We add that collection to this element, and then whenever we return it, we call the toString method that generates the HTML force. So to test how this works, what I have is a for loop that will generate 10 P elements. Uh, for every even element, it's going to have a background color of white, and every odd element, it's going to have a kind of grayish background. And we can see here we are passing an anonymous object to our paragraph method here. It will change the background color according to uh, what iteration we are within the loop. So if I run this, we will see when it generates the HTML that here we have uh, 10 P elements and they have alternating uh, background colors. And if we look at the source then we can see that we have these P elements. They have a background style of uh, a white color and then a grayish color. So we can use this technique just about anywhere that we want key value pairs. It doesn't have to be with an HTML helper or anything like that. Anytime that we just need a simple key value pair value, we can use this technique to generate uh, basically whatever we need to convert this object into uh, database parameters or something like that. So that about wraps this up. My name is Jeremy McPeak for NetTuts. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it.